When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The Gospel narrative is moving along to its inevitable climax of Jesus' trial and condemnation by the authorities and his death by crucifixion. This part of the story is about how Jesus is betrayed and deserted by those around him. In the first passage from Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples, You will all become deserters. They all deny this, led fervently by Peter. In the second passage, we hear that Jesus is arrested, betrayed by Judas. The one I will kiss is the man, says Judas. Lead him away under guard. And Judas does just that. He goes up to Jesus and says, Rabbi, and kisses him. And the guards laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. Why did Judas kiss Jesus? Why did he not just point him out to the authorities or lay a hand on his shoulder? At this time, when for us almost all intimate physical contact, the hug, the kiss, even the handshake, is forbidden, it seems both ironic and tragic that Jesus should be betrayed by a kiss. Perhaps the kiss is because Judas had been one of Jesus' inner circle, one who had lived with him, travelled with him, heard his teaching and seen his miracles. But now he is betraying him. Perhaps the kiss with which it is done is signifying that Judas once loved Jesus, but has now turned against him. Why the betrayal? We don't know. Was it for money, as some suggest? Or was it because Jesus had failed to be the leader that Judas had wanted? Jesus wasn't going to be the new secular King of the Jews. The kingdom Jesus was establishing here on earth was altogether different. And why did the disciples desert Jesus and run away? This is understandable in the face of Jesus' arrest by the authorities. But where was their commitment? I will not deny you, said Peter, only a short while before. And all the disciples had agreed with him. But they too did not really understand the sort of leader that Jesus was, nor his true purpose. They were frightened and disorientated. The leader they had followed for three years, and who had seemed all-powerful, albeit in the gentlest of ways, now appeared powerless and completely at the mercy of his enemies. As with Judas, Jesus wasn't meeting their expectations, unformed though they may have been. What about us? Are we today like the disciples were then? Are we fearful and disorientated? Are our expectations of what life should be 
being met? If we could, would we run away? Where can we gain the innermost strength to go on in faith and hope that the disciples didn't have? What we know, and the disciples didn't, is that the gospel story didn't end with the crucifixion. It was God's will that Jesus should be crucified and die. And in doing so, he died for us. And what we also know is that there is nothing whatsoever that can separate us from the love of God. Amen. A prayer of St. Augustine of Hippo. Watch, thou dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, Lord Christ. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones. I ask all this for your love's sake. Amen.